The success of American agriculture over the past 100 years is unsurpassed. Farm families and agricultural businesses have made incredible advances to help feed a growing world population and serve a changing marketplace. The farm credit system has played an integral role in that development. Based on the tenets of farmer ownership, expertise in the industry served, and commitment to farmer success, farm credit has held firm on its promise to serve agriculture through good times and bad. The customers that we have served have made the changes in their business to compete on the global arena, and that's forced farm credit uh, because we're a customer-focused business to make similar changes. I think that focus on financing agriculture, fishermen, farm-related businesses, timber businesses has caused us to be innovative and, and do the things we needed to do to be successful into the future. What we know today as the farm credit system was born on July 17, 1916, when President Woodrow Wilson signed the Farm Loan Act into law. Any piece of legislation that endures for over 100 years, there has to be something visionary in the original concept. In the Farm Loan Act, the visionary concept was cooperative ownership. At the time, it was a brand new concept. Most people thought it was rather audacious and it wouldn't last. It not only lasted, it proved itself, and cooperative ownership is still a bedrock of what the farm credit system is all about. The Northeast may have always been the smallest corner of the farm credit system, but Northeast leaders played major roles in its development. One of the first was Herbert Myrick of Springfield, Massachusetts. He championed three very fundamental concepts in the Farm Loan Act. The first was cooperative ownership. The second was that this ought to benefit borrowers through lower interest rates and patronage dividends. The third was that you could package quality first mortgage loans on farm real estate, take those to the New York City money markets to fund this new financial system. Soon after passage of the Farm Loan Act, 12 federal land banks were chartered, each with its own district. Northeast farmers were served by the Federal Land Bank of Springfield, opened in March of 1917. The development of agricultural colleges and cooperative extension brought a greater focus on farm productivity and farm business skills during the 1920s. There was also a significant expansion in the number of farmer-owned cooperatives, including dairy and grain cooperatives. Cooperative business structures were not well known by other lenders. To this point, farm credit had focused solely on farm mortgage loans but increasingly farmers were in need of credit for seasonal operating purposes to purchase seed and other supplies in the spring. This led to the second major change to the farm credit system. The 1930s were a period of incredible devastation in American agriculture and the American economy, the Great Depression. When Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected in 1933, Congress quickly passed two major pieces of legislation the Emergency Farm Mortgage Act and the Farm Credit Act, which not only shored up cooperative ownership, but added some important new capabilities for the farm credit system. As always, Northeast leaders were there, leading farm credit into the future. Some of the most important changes in the 30s were advocated by two New Yorkers, William I. Myers and Henry Morgenthau, Jr. They added production credit associations, farmer-owned associations which were able to lend money not only for farm mortgages but for operating and production purposes. They created a new system called the Bank for Cooperatives which not only enabled the farm credit system to finance the farmers themselves but now to finance their marketing and farm supply organizations and other needs that would assist farmers to be more productive, profitable and safe. As the United States entered World War II, farmers worked hard to meet demand. The country's focus shifted to producing military equipment and feeding its armed forces overseas. The devastation left by the war and the determination of that generation to rebound afterwards brought a renaissance of technological advances and growth, not only in urban areas, but in suburban populations as well. 
Agriculture was not left behind. Technology led to tremendous advances in productivity. Farms continued to consolidate, allowing for development of greater production expertise, while improvements in equipment and management skills resulted in significant increases per acre. Since 1939, the Farm Credit Administration had been part of the Department of Agriculture. But in 1953, President Dwight Eisenhower fulfilled a campaign pledge to separate the two. Had that not happened in 1953, Farm Credit might have ended up as just another federal corporation similar to what we know as USDA Farm Services Agency today. Just another important government agency, but farmer ownership and things like patronage dividends would have been lost. The 1953 legislation continued the cooperative's push toward complete farmer ownership. Full borrower ownership of the farm credit system was earned the old-fashioned way. Every year the cooperatives made some money and they used a lot of that money to repay the government and buy the government capital back. They did that over three decades starting in the early 1940s and finishing in 1968. I don't know of too many other situations where the federal government invested in the startup of a cooperative or some other type of organization and then the owners of that cooperative repaid the government in full with interest. The opening of trade with the Soviet Union and other global markets in the 1970s resulted in a boom for American agriculture. The American farmer was increasingly looked at to feed the world's population. In the early 1900s, on average, one U.S. farmer produced enough to feed 10 people, most of which were located within 50 miles. By 1975, this had grown to 45 people with an increasingly international reach. Today, each farmer is responsible for feeding a remarkable 155 people in all parts of the globe. The Farm Credit Act of 1971 was really a coming out party for attaining full customer ownership of the system several years earlier. In the credit area, it extended eligibility to farm-related businesses, to rural residents in towns of under 2,500, and to commercial fishermen for the first time. In the services area, it opened up a whole new area in which the farm credit system could provide business services that would help farmers not only become more profitable, but also manage their risk. Financial services such as record keeping and consulting are a successful part of farm credit today. One of the leaders in developing financial services was Howell Hughes. He recognized that the art of making loans was changing and that it needed to be professionalized. And so he updated the credit underwriting, the loan approval process, and appraisal procedures here in the Northeast. That turned out to be very critical because it enabled the Northeast to avoid the most difficult problems that Midwestern farm credit organizations had later on in the 1980s. U.S. agriculture was rocked with yet another crisis in the 1980s. The Federal Reserve responded to runaway inflation in the non-farm economy by hiking interest to double-digit rates. Soon the economy was in recession and a rising dollar reduced export demand. The result? A perfect storm for American agriculture. Land values plummeted, production costs rose, and drought damaged crops. These challenges were also felt by farm credit, which had not established adequate capital levels or the lending disciplines necessary to deal with such a dramatic market disruption. Congress reacted with several new initiatives. The first was the ability for farmer directors to figure out how to consolidate institutions, not only to become more efficient, but to better manage and absorb the risk of farm lending cycles. The second was a new institutional format, if you will, called the Agricultural Credit Association. And for the first time, the Agricultural Credit Association allowed local farmers to put real estate, production, and other types of lending all into one local institution. Farm Credit East today is still an Agricultural Credit Association, ACA.
For the past 25 years, the farm credit system has seen significant growth and success. Associations have consolidated to increase efficiencies and reduce costs. Digital technology has made lending more efficient, enabling better risk management and enhancing speed and service to the customer. As part of the cooperative model, Farm Credit East has built capacity while sharing its success through a robust patronage program. With strong earnings and a commitment to building capital and maintaining efficiencies, Farm Credit East strives to be a reliable and consistent partner for agriculture, forest products, and commercial fishing today and into the future. The Farm Credit System is a marvelous public policy success story. And I think it's that original foresight that the founding fathers had for setting up a governance structure uh, made up of farmers who are customers, of creating a cooperative structure, of creating a specialization to focus on agriculture, of hiring the kind of staff and employees that want to be involved, helping customers be successful. And I think those factors, governance, focus, specialization, serving rural communities, has been a real factor in why Farm Credit has been successful over the past 100 years.